Hey ho, let's go. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you're well wherever you are. Hi, John Pugsley Martin. This is episode 29 of Pugsley's Pick. As we always do, we begin each and every show asking you the question, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? As we said, it's a Monday. Football is in the air. Uh, before we get to that, by way of introduction, I am a freelance sports writer for the Albany Times Union an avid sports enthusiast, a big-time homer for my teams, with no apologies. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter, at Pugsley's Pit, taking the podcast on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. And as I said, football was in the air. The Raiders are 2-0. and I know it doesn't mean anything, but no one's gotten hurt, so that means something to me. On today's show, we're going to delve into the world of fantasy football. And as we often do here in the pit, we bring in a guest that knows a hell of a lot more about the topic than I do. As a result of uh, evidence by our, our playoff uh, seedings last year where uh, our guest made the playoffs and I did not. With that, we are going to welcome 11-year-old Ben Stevens to Pugsley's Pit. Ben, how are you? Um, good. Yeah, how's your summer? Um, pretty good so far. Pretty good. Your podcast debut. Yep. You excited? Yeah. Now, we're going to grill you. We have tough, tough expectations here. I'm sure you'll do well, though. Okay. How is, uh, first and foremost, we share a fantasy football league. How is the <clears throat> off-season preparation for the no punt intended front office? Is that going to be your name again this year? Um, Yeah, I think it is. Because, okay. uh, yeah. You all, you all ready for the fantasy football or draft isn't too far off? Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I have a good sense of what players I'm looking for word to getting okay i gotta ask you before we get into fantasy football so take me through the stevens household on a monday you beat your dad in a game do you do you remind him does he need to be reminded how does that work do you gloat i hope so i would well it wouldn't actually be it depends if i win on a monday or on a tuesday depending on if there's a monday night player but okay. I'd be really excited. I'd be like, look who's best now. Hey, and that's what it's all about. If I were you, I'd be taping the final score on the refrigerator on his head, if that is an option, if he ever dozes off for a nap. I'd let him know about it. You, you, he's got to know who runs the fantasy football world in your household, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay. Don't don't be afraid. Don't be bashful. Let him, let him know. Let him know when you beat him. If you beat me, just let it slide by and focus on your next week opponent, though, okay? So here's my question. You get a fantasy football draft. Where would you prefer to pick in round one and in subsequent rounds? For me, I kind of like being in the middle. Um, what's your preferred spot for your draft strategy? I, re I like the mid-round picks, but I also like the number four spot. Because if you look at it, you know you're either getting one of the really – elite running back, you're either getting Jonathan Taylor or, like, you're either getting like, your Christian McCaffrey or Cooper Cup, basically. So you're getting two really good um, players, and, like, then when you go to the second round, there's still good talent left on the board. What What's your strategy, okay? I, obviously, look, the first couple of rounds, you just want the best player. You can fill a position. A lot of people say the running backs are at a premium. You have a lot of committees now on teams. Is that your strategy, or is it just who's the best player available to me at that time? I would fill a position because, you know, now there's so much depth at the running back and wide receiver that you're always going to find one that can be relevant to start. So... And because there's, say, you're in a round and you see a really good quarterback, but you see a good depth piece, I take that quarterback over the depth piece, considering, like, you know, you can't really do it because you see the running backs, there's so many of them yep. that there's a ton of back, 
um, um, there's a ton of backups that can easily just take the starting lineup. It can yeah. just go in, and I'd rather take an uncertainty, an uncertainty as a backup in later rounds than a more certain player in the earlier rounds instead of a good quarterback. Speaking or, of good quarterbacks, would you? I think <clears throat> is it fair to say you like the four spot because that's Derek Carr's number, and he's the best quarterback in the league. Um, no. No? Not at all. Okay. But I can say this. Derek Carr is the best player in the NFL currently wearing four. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for the plug. I appreciate that. So, if you could name five guys. Give me five. Who's your best five off the board this year? You mentioned Cooper Cup. He was unbelievable last year. Can he do it again? Who's your best five guys? My number five is Justin Jefferson. Because his receiving talent is very good. And with the quarterback, like, Kirk Cousins um, is in the top three all-time in career completion percentage and seventh in quarterback rating. Really? Meaning he's pretty good and accurate, which gives Justin Jefferson tons of receptions, which he can make into great plays and yardage. Mm -hmm. My number four is Derrick Henry. Yeah, he's a beast. Injury, he's still going to be good. And he's going to be the main show there since the whole entire receiving group has been turned upside down. Now their two best receivers are the trade. They traded for Robert Woods, who's also coming off an injury, and rookie Traylon Burks. My number three is Christian McCaffrey. He's really good. The only downside is... um. He's only played 10 games in the past two years, yeah. so he's been oft injured. So it depends on if he's healthy, but if he is healthy, he can be definitely a great number one running back, especially in PPR leagues. My number two is Cooper Cup. I don't think he'll be able to match completely all of his stats from last year, but it'll be very good. And then my number one is Jonathan Taylor. I mean, if you see what he did last year, I think a, a little bit of his rushing production will be taken away, considering that they've gone up in wide receiver. Like I, because with Matt Ryan now on the roster, I think him and Michael Pittman will make a good duo. Yeah. But with Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, I think he'll also use a couple of snaps to Naheem Hines this year. Awesome. Yeah, the uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can do that. McCaffrey, yeah, he's typically healthy. He's usually the number one guy on the board. Um, but I agree with the Derrick Henry thing, and, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in Tennessee because Brian Tannehill stinks. I, I, I know he's the quarterback, but he isn't very good. Uh, and then Malik Willis, I know, looked good the other night. Yeah, you keep preseason in context. It is what it is. But, uh, yeah, they're a run-first team. That's why I love Derrick Henry. I had him on a couple of teams last year, and when he got injured, it was devastating. How do you, how do you deal with injuries? Do you, do you, do you go to your room and, and, and cry like I do when you get a debilitating injury? Do you just say next man up and, uh, and start scouring that waiver wire? Yeah, I look for, like, what's the best player available. And so, like – Say, like last year, my running back room always had injuries in it. So I looked for players, and by the end of the year, I had Rex Burkhead on my team. Because Rex Burkhead, Nebraska. At, Nebraska. The end of his, at the end of that year, he was amazing. So you, oh, you have to look for the uh, players that are coming up. Because if you looked at the running room there coming into the beginning of the season, you didn't know. So, look at that. How about underrated guys, undervalued? You can get a little later in the draft. Who out there just seems to kind of, like, I'll use the example. I have Derek Carr on my team every year because now this year's a little different with Devontae Adams there, a little more exposure, so I may have to pick him early. But he's always a guy I could get late because the Raiders didn't win much. People didn't think a lot of him, but yet he put up great numbers. Who, who out there um, – is underrated that you think might have a really nice fantasy football season. My number five is Isaiah McKenzie. 
I've um, been looking at some reports, and currently he's in an, uh, in the lead for the slot position for the Bills. Okay. And look at his three games in the past few years without Cole Beasley, and he put up like th- like a hundred yards in each of those games and touchdowns. So I think he has a chance to get some pretty good rolling, and people aren't really looking at him. He could be a late round sleeper, in my opinion. My number four. <laughs> Go ahead. I know who Isaiah McKenzie is now, so thank you. My number four is George Pickens, the rookie. Yeah. He is put into that role as the number um, um, three receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I, mm, I recently have done some mock drafts. And I got George Pickens as a very late land, like a fort. Like he was in the 14th, 15th round. He's a good late. He's very. I'd pick him because I think he has a ton of upside as a receiver. Because Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool play a little bit closer to the line, while him, he can get the deep ball yards, which is very helpful. Then I have. Damien, number three, my number three one is Damien Pierce. He's a rookie running back for Houston, and I think he'll be able to win over the starting job at least at some point during the year. He may not be the starter at the beginning, but he, because all, the only competition he has is Marlon Mack, who we haven't seen in a while, and Rex Burkhead. I think, I think he'll be, he'll, after this, He'll eventually win the starting job this year. So look at him if you're not going to draft him as maybe a waiver line pickup for an injured player later in the year. And then I've got him also, if he wins the starting job, I think he'll have much a ton uh, more carries because if you look at Houston, their receiving corpse is this thin. They have Brandon Cooks, and like that's it. They're hoping for like Nico Collins, who's coming into his second year, to bounce up. And so I have him. And my number two, my number two is Traylon Burks. Okay, he's very fast. He, yeah, he's fast. And plus, look, he's going to be as the number two wide receiver, and he should be prioritized as a number one. He, if you look at his college highlights, he is a beast. So I think he has a chance to get that number one pick. I think they, the number one place on the uh, on the wide receiver, because if you look at him, his Robert Woods is aging and going down. So and him, he can skyrocket to the top. My number one is Jalen Hurts. Really? Yes. Okay. Like, you look at him, he has, his ceiling is the 2019 form of Lamar Jackson. Okay. That is his ceiling. I mean, now he has a revamped receiving core. Yes, he does. With a, Including A.J. Brown, which is a... And he is a very good receiver. Plus, we saw last year he had over 700 yards on the ground rushing. Meaning his rushing production, along with a revamp to giving him more passing production, he has a chance to be a top five quarterback. Wow, interesting. Uh, you know what? Those those rushing yards are, are undervalued sometimes when they come from a quarterback. Okay. But they add a ton of fantasy points. Yes, they do. How about overvalued guys? Now, look, I'll give you my overvalued list first, okay? Okay. Number one is Matt Ryan. I think he's, his arm is dead. Number two is Russell Wilson, just because he plays in Denver, and I hate the Broncos. And and number three is um, – um, what was I going to say? Oh, anybody else that plays in the AFC West that does not play for the Raiders. And Trey Lance, because I don't think he's ready. He may be good in a year or two. He needs more reps. Do you subscribe to the same notion I do on draft day that usually it's best Raider available when it comes time to pick? 
No. No? No. Come on. I do, too, who I think is either going to explode and become better this year or who I think is going to keep his steady good production. Okay. who? Give me, give me some overvalued guys. Give me guys to stay away from. Saquon Barkley is one of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, looking at his injury history, he was out for the year, and he got injured for stepping on somebody's foot. <laughs> like, if you look at that, he looks oft injured, oftenly injured since his rookie year. He, he's been oft injured, and he hasn't been as good. Okay. Plus, I think they're gonna tr uh, try to get Daniel uh, Daniel Jones more passing, but enough, but a little bit more about him later. Number two, Ezekiel Elliott. He's on his way down. I agree with you. Yeah. He's going down. I mean, he might have – this year he might be decent, but Tony Pollard, because I've seen what Jerry Jones has been saying. He's saying he's keeping him as the main starter, and Tony Pollard's going to do the same role as last year. Yep. But Tony Pollard has – Tony Pollard has another great thing. He's in the return game, which if he strikes it big, along with his rushing production, he has a pretty good – Good chance to uh, get a ton of fantasy points. My number three is Daniel Jones. Oh, he's terrible. Some people are still picking him to be their starting quarterback. I want those people in our league. Only <laughs> one can have them, but I want that mindset in our league. I mean, if you look at him, he, he, he's been in a, a team with loads of talent at the wide receiver position. And he... Like last year, his receiving corps included Evan Ingram, Dar Darius Slayton, Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, um, John Ross, who was a great deep threat, and what's his name? Oh my! And what is his name? Ah, <laughs> uh, you can go back to it. You'll it'll yeah. come. To you. He he. He just doesn't. He just doesn't have it. He has so much talent around him, and he's not able to utilize it. I think like Tyrod Taylor might just give him a run for his money this year. He might. You know why? Tyrod Taylor is one of the best backups in the league. Now, if he's your starter, he's you're going, you're he's, going seven and ten. Okay, that's about what he is. But if he comes off the bench. Yeah, he might win you a game or two here or there, as long as he's not your full-time guy. I mean, if you look at him in his past, the best time he was was with the Bills. In his three years with the Bills, he made the Pro Bowl and brought them to their first Super Bowl. And that's with a, a horrible Bills team. They had basically no talent on that roster. So if he went into this Giants team, you look at this roster and he'll be able to do stuff. My number four to stay is DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, now he's in a team which has compiled tons of talent, and with the suspension, it'll it'll take still take a couple of games to get him back on track. Yeah. And by then, it's like week nine, and six games out. I mean, that's not that good if you want to get a good fantasy guy. And my number, my number five. And my last one is Dawson Knox, the Titan for the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Oh, a lot of people have him skyrocketing up because, oh, be they got rid of Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders. Well, I, I'm i not necessarily saying that he's going down. I'm just saying that he's not going completely up like everybody's saying. He still could be a solid starting tight end, okay. but just not through the roof like everybody's thinking. He's not going to win you a league is what you're saying, right? Yeah, he's not going to win you a league. Okay. Who are the best outside of Derek Carr, who we've we've agreed is the best quarterback in football? Pretty sure I saw you nod your head in the affirmative way when <laughs> I said that. Who, who are the best quarterbacks, not in the NFL, but for fantasy football? There is a difference, slight difference, but there's a difference. Well, here I have I have Jalen Hurts again. Yeah. I'm putting in my in Tom Brady. You saw what he did last year. He, um, even though people are saying he's going down, he still has stuff in him. Plus, he, 
I've seen him be available way later than some quarterbacks who are below him in talent, which means you get a good guy, but way later than you should be able to get him. All right, like, here's a question for you. <clears throat> I know you weren't born, and I know you have a Patriot influence in your house. Are you familiar with the tuck rule game? Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. Would you agree that it was a fumble? Yeah, that really did look like a fumble because it looked like he was throwing the ball down to the ground. Like he was spiking it. And it he, it's like, you, that looks like a sack, a forced fumble sack. Yes, thank but you. He was in the middle of his throw, but he was also being taken down at the exact same time, and he dropped the ball. I mean, that's the definition of that type of sack. You're, you're right. Now, listen, Ben, I've been petitioning the league for over 20 years to award the Raiders that Super Bowl championship. Can I count on your support? Um, I'm not. I'd say they should have won the game, but I'm not sure. I don't know about the Super Bowl. We know what. It depends. It depends. All right. Well, we'll, we'll come back to that uh, another time. But thank you for your support and your acknowledgement of one of the greatest crimes in the history of sports. Worst quarterbacks, who are you staying away from other than Daniel Jones? Um, I have Deshaun Watson. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, he's a mess. It's six-game suspension? Yeah, I don't think so. I'm also staying away from early as Lamar Jackson. People have him as like a top three quarterback, but I have him a little lower. Because, fine, he has that good um, rushing numbers, but his passing numbers aren't that good at all. Even okay. looking back at his MVP campaign, he had like just 3,000 passing yards in the air. That's not a lot. So, he's got, I need to see a um, big jump in his passing numbers for me to, uh, to put him in the top, top three, top five at quarterback. Also, Carson Wentz. Do not I mean, draft him. still in the league? <laughs> Do not draft him. No. He just cannot play anymore. Fine. He was very high in touchdown passes, but he was just inconsistent through quite a couple of interceptions, and his passing yard numbers were n nothing to look at. Okay. So what is – when it comes to free agents, okay, well, I'll give you my philosophy. I try and work the waiver wire early because you may have some guys that go undrafted that you don't see that they're on the radar until they get a week or two or somebody gets hurt. Are you aggressive on the waiver wire early in a year, or do you kind of bide your time and, and spread it out a little bit? We're in a league that you have a certain X number of dollars available to you. Are you aggressive, or do you kind of sit back and, and see what happens? I think, I think you should have a small rush at the beginning of the year, because sometimes – at position battles, depending on when the draft is, you pick people even though people are still not completely sure who's going to win the position battle okay. until week one. And then you see who's won. Sometimes people end up picking the wrong guy. And you can end up trying to snatch that guy off the waivers. Also, as you can see, there are sometimes injuries in the beginning weeks. Yeah. Not only to your team members, but to starters ahead of people who aren't on rosters. I take, like, if you look at San Francisco in their running back room, I say completely just stay away from it un unless you're taking a late round sleeper. Like Elijah Mitchell, I wouldn't take him as high as he's being taken just because he's on San Francisco. Yeah, they're going to share a and lot of carries there. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm going to give you a name. Late round depth. <coughs> Zamir White for the Raiders. Yeah, yeah I, think he has, I think he has the chance to win the backup role over Kenyon Drake. And with, and I think, like, after this year, because the Raiders didn't pick up uh, Josh Jacobs' fifth-year option, I think Josh Jacobs might be out of here. Hope and not, that, I think you're right. And that's why they um, drafted Zamir White. And Zamir White, definitely, I'd put him as late round, you know, player to pick. See how he, 
see what happens during his first few games, and if he's good, keep him. If you find somebody that you like better, you can replace him. Is there any advice that we haven't covered that you would give fantasy people before their draft? Um, I'd say there's some players I have on injury watch at the wide receiver position. Michael Thomas, yeah. I, he's got, probably going to have a great, a good year. But I um think you should just he's think in this mindset he's probably not going to be real great for like the first few weeks of the season because he hasn't played in a while. Then I have Jerry Judy on injury watch. Even I him on dropped passes watch because that's what he does. Yep. Even last year, he still dropped quite a few passes for his limited time, and his stats haven't been that good. And plus, he's not even the w- number one. Fine, I'd put him in, but just watch out for him. I have two really high upside wide receivers. They're Michael Pittman and Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman is the is the um, number one wide receiver in Baltimore and the number two overall after Mark Andrews. Okay. I think they're like the only things that are getting receiving production, as you saw last year with Mark Andrews and Marquise Brown. I all and Michael Pittman with Matt Ryan now. Matt Ryan, he's an upgrade from Carson Wentz. Even though he's getting older and he's losing losing some of his arm strength, he's still an upgrade over Carson Wentz and will give him a nice quarterback that can give him two back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Going and down... Just, just for the record, your your seven-week-old brother is, would be an upgrade over Carson Wentz in the quarterback position. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tight end. Um, go. Um, I also have DeAndre Hopkins, again, going down, and Kenny Galladay. Okay. Kenny Galladay is now in a completely stacked, like they got w- Wand- uh, Wandale Robinson, and I still can't remember his name. That's okay. The rookie from last year, taken with the twentieth overall pick in the first round. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Ladarius Tony, Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony, yeah. Okay. With them, two young guys. Along with, I really like Darius Slayton, but he's been going down. Kenny Galladay doesn't. I don't think has a chance, because in this receiving room, they have five very capable wide receivers. So, I think that, I think Kenny Gaudi is going down. At high upside, for a late round sleeper, um, is Tyrone Davis Price from San Francisco. I know he's probably not, but if an injury comes along, you saw what happened with Elijah Mitchell last year. What happened to Trey Sherman, and then boom, Elijah Mitchell won the job. At high upside, for a late round backup pick, I'd take Desmond Ritter. He could okay. win the job over Marcus Mariota some way during the year, but he probably won't. But it's good to see, uh, I'd say, you c- should watch him, see um, the progressions going on in that team. And... At tight end, Dalton Schultz and Pat Freermuth have very high upside, and I really, really like Pat Freermuth. You saw last year, he caught a ton of touchdowns because he was a great red zone target for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Dalton Schultz, um, with injury, and we saw Michael Gallup's probably not going to be ready for week one, and... He'll be the probably the number two wide receiver behind C.D. Lamb, and so yeah. Um, going down, I have Evan Ingram. Okay. His Pro Bowl nod in 2020 just shouldn't have happened. He had only 600 and, like, 38 receiving yards and, like, six touchdowns, and he somehow made the Pro Bowl. That's like Jack Doyle. Nothing against Jack Doyle, but he is not, he was, he did not, his two, his best receiving production was 600 yards, and he somehow made two Pro Bowls. He reminds me sort of of, like, that sort of guy. A guy who gets, like, 
a little bit of production here and there, but is not, like, really good. Evan Ingram is also fighting against all of those wide receivers in the wide receiver room to get um, receptions. Hey, going back to Desmond Ritter real quick, you know why I like him is – Mariota, he backed up in, in, in Vegas for a couple of years. I loved him as a backup. I don't think he's a starter that's going to take you anywhere. They're going to be terrible this year. So you could see them as soon as the season gets away, maybe after six, seven, eight games, where they just go with the kid and see what you have, right? They're going to yeah. be one of the worst teams in the league. At least that's the feeling right now. You might as well see if Ritter can play. I, I think he'll be taking over by, by midseason there. Because they need to find out what do they have, or are they going to have to go into the draft early next year to get a quarterback in, up in the top? So I love Mariota. Thank for all he did for Vegas, but uh, he ain't it. Yeah, and if you look at this roster, they have there's th- only three players on the offense in the skill positions that I trust, and it's Kyle Pitts, Cordero Patterson and Drake London, but this is what I'm just saying. Don't draft uh, Drake London. His ADP is too high for the type of player he's going to be on this team because, like, you look at Marcus Mariota on his 12 snaps on the opening drive during the preseason. He had three runs, and all of those runs weren't conducted. I think he's going to use his legs a little more, giving um, less opportunities to the guys out wide. Okay. All right. So, look, here, here's the big question of the day. Let's get away from fantasy football for a little bit. Who's going to the Super Bowl? You can you got a couple weeks. You can change your pick if somebody gets hurt. Right now, you're getting ready to watch the Super Bowl, number 57 this year. When you sit down to watch it, who would you say is going? So, when I look at the AFC, I know a ton of people are saying Bills. But they're one injury away from losing it because they have no depth. Okay. You go, they have two really good wide receivers, Gabriel Davis and Stephon Diggs, a good quarterback. Besides from the, run, the running back rooms just mayhem, they have very slim cornerback depth. Yep. And, they've, and the only thing they've added – Onto the defense is really just a Vaughn Miller. All I'm thinking is that they've lost a ton of guys. If they lose one guy, they could snap, which is why I, my pick, just barely, it depends on what happens. I really, really like the Chargers. What? The guys they've brought in, the players they brought in are of the highest volume. They've bolstered up their defense. They added J.C. Jackson and Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, when he's healthy, is a premier pass rusher. And J.C. Jackson was second in the league in interceptions last year and led the league in passes defensed, making a very good um, complement with Derwin James in the secondary. Okay, you see over my shoulder? You see that pendant over my shoulder? Yeah. Yeah, the silver and black one? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) So, with uh, that, it all all really depends on how the division goes. Considering all these teams could make the playoffs, it just happens to know which one will. Denver isn't making the playoffs. It's either going to be, in my opinion, the Chargers or one of these teams. It's either going to be the Bills or one of these teams from the C West. It's just going to be crazy there. And the one that wins in that division is going to be with the Bills as the odds-on favorite in the AFC to go to the Super Bowl. Then I'll take that as endorsement of the Raiders. Thank you. That's how I'm receiving. I hear what you're saying, but that's how I'm receiving your words. Then in the NFC, you can tell that there's not much depth in who's no. making the playoffs. You got, this is basically all you got. The Dallas Cowboys, I'm automatically eliminating them from any contention. I agree. 
because they just always find a way to lose. Then, so these are the guys that I think could possibly and will make it. I think the Green Bay. I think the Green Bay Packers won't because they just haven't been able to get over that hump, and they've lost a ton of got. They've lost Devonte Adams on offense, making the whole squad just much much worse on the offensive side. And I don't think with that Devonte, he'll be able to make make over the hump because he's because st- like these guys don't really need double teamed, and the guy he fi- finds a good relationship with won't have the advantage of playing with an already really good receiver who's drawing double teams. Okay. So I have the Buccaneers because of their well depth. Well, their t- team is completely well in depth. They brought in Russell to replace Antonio Brown. They brought in Julio Jones and Russell Gage. <clears throat> Russell Gage can play in the slot, which is really good, and Julio Jones can be a situational player. And then the next one I have is the Rams. If you look at what they did last year, yeah. and then you, I look at the 49ers. They were so close to winning it, but they ended up losing. So close. So it, that was a, a very close. And then, and I'm finally eliminating the Arizona Cardinals. Yep. I mean, they're a good overall team, but they lost a little bit on their defense. And I honestly don't see them. I can see them. Make, I can definitely see them making it to the playoffs. I think it'll be the same teams from last year, besides that maybe one of the three wild card teams might be replaced by New Orleans. That's yeah, maybe that, James Winston is Yeah, it depends. Scary. Defense is very good. <clears throat> yeah. And plus with Alvin Kamara and the receiving corpse is pretty good. If James Winston doesn't throw a ton of picks, I think they have a chance to make the playoffs. So, and between the th- uh, three teams I said, I think that the San Francisco... It all depends on whether San Francisco's healthy, if they're able to make it. Yep. It depends if the Rams are able to make their form that they had last season. And, finally... Are the Buccaneers able to get over that hump again with the help of Tom Brady? I think the Bucs are going to get there just because their division is not very good. The only real, the only team that's actually uh, half decent is New Orleans. Yeah, and that's mainly because their defense is completely amazing. Yeah, if you look at some of the guys, you got like Demario Davis, Cam Jordan. Marshawn Lattimore, they brought in Tyron Matthew to add to one of the safeties. And with C.J. Gardner-Johnson, I think this team has a really good defense with along at the wide receiver, Chris Olave and Michael Thomas, mm-hmm. along yep. with Jarvis Landry. And then you got Alvin Kamara with Mark Ingram behind him. I'll tell you what, Ben, I'm, I'm glad you came on because now I don't have to do any homework for our draft. You've given me all the information I need. So thank you very much. Look, it was a pleasure having you on today. I really enjoyed it. Uh, let's uh, let's reconvene during the fantasy football season. Uh, you up for that? I'm up for it. And just remember, if you beat your dad, it's okay to gloat. Let him know. Let him know who rules that house in fantasy football. All right, buddy? All right. All right. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. Bye, Ben. Thanks for your time, buddy. Bye. Ben Stevens, 11-year-old fantasy football guru. Didn't know who Isaiah McKenzie was until this show, and now I do. Let's go to my world real quick. Raider football. <clears throat> yeah, 2-0. and Okay. Rather lose than or win than lose, but they look good again. Uh, Jared Stidham might actually blossom into a decent backup should something bad happen to number four. He knows that system. Um, he looked confident yesterday from what I saw. <clears throat> the defense has done a decent job getting off the field, which any Raider fan will tell you has been an absolute nightmare for 20 years. Um, but 
like I said, no major injuries coming out of it. Darren Waller, they finally addressed why he hasn't been out there. It's it's a it's an injury, no rush. He may be back at practice this week, which would be phenomenal because I want to see that unit took up. And you know, Ben brought up his his, his pick of the Chargers, Raiders at Chargers to open up. Should be a lot of fun, but let's be healthy. Um, hey, look, probably not going to have a show next week since I'm going to be on a beach uh, enjoying some some downtime. Um, so we're going to miss the Huskers opening week in Ireland next week against Northwestern. Be, we're not going to be able to do much of a preview of the Huskers, but all you need to know is 3-9 and nine last year in the greatest 3-9 and nine team history in the in the history of college football. Eight losses by a touchdown or less, and I think the ninth loss was by nine points to Ohio State. Um, look, man, it's a you got to – Scott Frost, this is his last chance. Trev Alberts gave him an extra year. A lot of people didn't want that year. But you got to win those games, and you've got to build a culture of teams that know how to win. And they haven't learned it yet, and last year proved it. I mean, my God, agonizing Saturdays for Husker Nation – just watching them give away games. And, and you know, we're, I'm hoping Casey Thompson steps up as the QB1. I think he's going to win the job over Chubba Purdy and Adrian Martinez. I wish him well at Kansas State. But, my God, was he a turnover machine. He'd look like a Heisman winner on one play and the next three plays, lose yardage, fumble, <clears throat> interception, get hurt. Trying to tackle the defender, it was it was just awful. So it, it was it, Scott Frost. I love Scott Frost. I think he was too loyal to some of his assistants, assistants for a few years that he brought with him some, from UCF, and he was too loyal with Adrian Martinez. But he didn't have another viable option. Um, Luke McCaffrey, Mr. Transfer, came in, was okay, and then left. I think he's on his eighth school now. Um, Logan Smothers is, is an okay quarterback. I don't think he's a, a winning Division One quarterback at the Big Ten level. But <clears throat> Casey Thompson from Texas, probably the only good thing that's come from the Texas program in 50 years. I hate the long words. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully he can do it. He can bring an attitude and, and, and just something to help this team get over the hump and win some games. Because once you get that going and you get that belief that you can win, and you learn how to win, then good things can happen. And the schedule is conducive for the Huskers um, this year. So we'll see. But uh, it'll be fun to watch uh, Fun to watch uh, Big Red take the field next week uh, from Ireland. And, and as always, the shameless plug of the week, my book, Letters from Daddy, Dear Liam and Noah, can be found on Amazon. So thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Have a great week. Have a great two weeks. If indeed I'm having just too much fun on the beach and cannot get to the computer we shall see nfl just a few weeks away just hope for everyone to be healthy don't want preseason and zach wilson learn how to slide or get out of bounds my friend that's my last bit of advice for you. I know.